Today, we're going to talk about taurine. What exactly is taurine? Perhaps you've seen it in different nutritional supplements, and you might be wondering, what is this? What does it do? Well, we're going to talk about that in this video. Now, taurine is considered an amino acid, but it's not the kind that you've learned in your typical biochemistry class. A typical carboxylic acid has an alpha carbon with four different groups. The first group attached to the alpha carbon is a carboxylic acid. There's a hydrogen. There's an R group, which distinguishes one amino acid from another. And there's also an amino group. So that's your typical amino acid. It has an amine group and a carboxylic acid. So it's called an amino acid. Now, taurine does have an amino group and it does have an acid group. So it makes sense why some would consider it an amino acid, but it has a different type of acid group. So we have this carbon here. We have the same hydrogen, but instead of the R group, there's going to be another hydrogen. Taurine does have the amino group. There's another carbon. Now, attached to that carbon is what is known as a sulfonic acid group. But nevertheless, as we could see, it has an amino group and it has an acid functional group. So it makes sense why it can be called an amino acid, but it's different. So instead of the carboxylic acid functional group, you have a sulfonic acid group. So that's taurine on the right. Now let's talk about some of the properties of taurine. Taurine is found conjugated in certain bile acids. And these are bile acids that are produced in the liver. Bile acids, they're very helpful in the absorption of fats and lipid soluble vitamins uh, during digestion. Now, taurine also functions as an osmolite. It's heavily involved in osmoregulation. It helps to maintain the volume of a cell and its shape as well. Another property of taurine is antioxidation. It can react with oxidants such as hypochlorous acid and hyperbromous acid. Now, the body can make taurine. Taurine can be produced from the amino acid cysteine. And it's hard to be deficient in this particular molecule because not only can your body make it, but it's found in foods such as meat and fish. So if you're consuming a variety of foods, it's hard to be deficient in this molecule. Now let's talk a little bit more about taurine's role as a bile acid. On the left, what we have here is a primary bile acid known as cholic acid. This is produced by the liver starting from cholesterol. And as you can see, the four fused rings found in any type of steroid molecule. Taurocholic acid is the conjugate of taurine and cholic acid. And this is the part of the molecule where taurine is found. So as you can see, taurine plays a role in the production of certain bile acids. There are other bile acids that are found in the body, such as quinodeoxycholic acid and other ones too. But taurine does play a role particularly in taurocholic acid and deoxyquino taurocholic acid as well. I meant to say taurocheno deoxycholic acid. But it, it's basically very similar to this structure. The only difference in a taurocheno deoxycholic acid is that it doesn't have this hydroxyl group here. Everything else is pretty much the same. Now let's talk about taurine's role as an osmolite. 
So let's say we have this cell. When this cell is exposed to a freshwater environment, water is going to flow into the cell due to the high external osmotic pressure that's being applied to the cell. And as a result, the cell is going to expand. It's going to swell. Now the cell has certain osmolites within it. Taurine is one of them, but there are other osmolites in the cell such as certain amino acids like glycine, anisetol, which is not an amino acid, uh, betaine, those are other osmolites in addition to taurine. Now when the cell gets too big, what can happen is that the cell can open certain channels to allow these osmolites to leave the cell. And when they leave the cell, they also take water with them. So some of the water molecules in the cell will leave when these channels open. They're going to follow uh, these osmolites as they exit. And as a result, the cell is going to return to its normal volume. And so that's how taurine functions as an osmolite. And that's how it can help maintain cell volume and the cell's appropriate shape. Otherwise, in a freshwater environment, the cells could swell and burst, or in a saltine environment, they can dehydrate and shrink and malfunction. So osmolites are very important in helping maintain the appropriate volume of a cell. Now let's talk about the synthesis of taurine from cysteine. When the body is low on taurine, it can use up the amino acid cysteine to produce it. And if the body is low on cysteine, it can use up the amino acids methionine and serine to make cysteine. But in the first step, in the synthesis of taurine from cysteine, oxygen is used to oxidize the thiol group into a SO2 minus group, producing a molecule known as cysteine sulfonate. Now the next step is decarboxylation, the removal of carbon dioxide. So the carboxyl group is going to be converted to a hydrogen. And this is going to create a molecule known as hypotaurine. When you hear the word hypo, hypo means below. Because if you were to compare hypotaurine and taurine, hypotaurine has one less oxygen than taurine. So the last step is oxygenation. The SO2 group is oxidized to SO3. And so the production of taurine from cysteine involves three steps. Oxidation, decarboxylation, and oxidation again. Now let's talk about taurine's role as an antioxidant as it detoxifies oxidants like HOCl, hypochlorous acid, and HOBr, hyperbromous acid. Chloride is found readily in the body and when it interacts with hydrogen peroxide it can be oxidized into hypochlorous acid. And the same is true for bromide. Bromide can react with hydrogen peroxide to produce hypobromous acid. Taurine reacts with hypochlorous acid and hypobromous acid to produce taurine chloramine, or if it reacts with this, it can produce taurine bromamine. So this compound is much less toxic than hypochlorous acid. And the body can easily excrete this in the urine. So that's how taurine works as an antioxidant in that it can reduce these two molecules, hypochlorous acid and hyperbromous acid. 
by the production of taurine chloramine and taurine bromamine.